It's really interesting seeing how all this stuff play out, honey, because the internet has been swarming left and right, left and right. And you know, I've been in the comment section, commenting, commenting, commenting. What's going on with Diddy? I mean, it's one thing if one person says something about you and we always want to believe victims. But if you've got a reputation the way that Diddy has had a reputation of like Diddy parties and they're always saying like, oh, you don't know what goes on there. And there's always this like mystique where it yeah. kind of sounded like, ooh, it's cool. But to find out it's been abuse the whole time. Yeah. That's scary. Those uh, video. Did you see that old video of like Diddy that was like. Bieber's, what, 14 years old? Had his hand over. I think like, I saw that, You're yeah. You're coming to Puffy Flavor Camp for 48 hours, and they were like, yeah, we can't really talk about what's going on. I, and I remember seeing that, like, live as a kid, and I was like, oh, my God, Justin Bieber's so lucky. Like, And we how, yeah. how we were, like, always looking at these kids that were in these spaces, and we were like, oh, my God, I would love to do that. But now I'm like, oh, thank God I was never in that yeah. space. This is the Transparency Podcast Show. Welcome to the Transparency Podcast Show. It's your girl, Blossom C. Brown, and I'm here with my lovely, lovely co-host here. They call him Shane Ivan Nash. What's going on, Shane? Hey, how you doing? Good. As you can see, we switched it up a little bit, and we don't have any guests, Shane. Oh, no. What should we do? Ah. <sighs> I have an idea. What? We're going to make this a hot topic day. What you oh, think about that? You know what? I think I got a teacup ready for the hot topic. Ooh! <laughs> what are we getting into? <laughs> <laughs> Child, listen, y'all. It is a lot going on. It's no tea, no shade. And we're going to just jump right on into it, honey, because it is a Diddy. lot. Diddy. Diddy. Diddy do it. Diddy don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he do Diddy it? Diddy <laughs> is a mess, honey. Now, as oh. y'all may have heard recently, Diddy had his houses raided in Miami as well as in Los Angeles. Yep. Apparently, he's under investigation for sex. He's under investigation for sex trafficking. Sex trafficking, and I think there's a possible drug connection too, because yeah, thing with the plane and all of that, and him not being on the thing. But go on, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know. It's really interesting seeing how all this stuff play out, honey, because the internet has been swarming left and right, left and right. And you know, I've been in the comment section, commenting, commenting, commenting. I mean, in my personal opinion, I think when Cassie's lawsuit came out, I yeah. feel like it kind of tipped off the feds a little that bit, was a floodgate. especially because she talked about sex trafficking in her lawsuit. Yeah. And so what are your thoughts about this, honey? Because well, I mean, this just is a the Cassie story alone, right? So allegedly in the lawsuit, she was blindfolded in a hotel room, repeatedly uh, essayed, um, mm -hmm. didn't know where she was at times. She was also drugged in that process. Now, again, this is all allegedly in the lawsuit, but yeah. according to multiple lawsuits, it seems that's come out by now another gentleman. Um, what is the gentleman's name that just got the new one? Uh, oh, my God. Rod something. Yes, Rod, okay. Rod, Rod. So that gentleman right now, with everything that he's presenting in his lawsuit, on top of with Cassie's lawsuit, it looks like it actually created Homeland Investigation. Now, listen. Ooh. Listen. It's one thing if the local cops are coming for you. It's another thing if the state cops are coming for you. It's a whole other thing if the FBI is coming for you. It's a different level when the CIA is coming for you. Homeland, Homeland Security. Security is all of that in one, you know, ooh, let me not smack, <laughs> let me not smack the mic. That's how serious it is. But it's literally all of these folks working in tandem together. That's what Homeland, because 9-11, that's actually where it kind of was created. And for you to get on their radar, mm -hmm. because what it looks like is international crimes, allegedly, that's going yeah. on where, I mean, why was his jet going to another country and he wasn't even on it when he was on the manifest to say that he was on it? And then his drug mule... You heard about that, right? The white boy? Yeah. He got caught with uh, a few different things at the Miami airport. So what do you think about that? Yeah, I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked. I think Diddy and his whole entourage think they can escape accountability. Listen, you can run, but you can only hide for so long. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, you know, child Stevie J, 50 Cent, everybody got something to say. Especially <laughs> Stevie J. 50 Cent is I'm like... Stevie J. Let's talk about Stevie J. Uh, what did Wendy Williams call him? Rat face. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. Where's the button? <laughs> Rat face. Yeah. Let me tell you something, Stevie J. Yep. Stevie J was pretty much defending Diddy. And I'm just kind of like, 
you know, you got your own problems. Aren't you still divorcing Faith Evans? Damn. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you got your own problems. And the thing is, you're defending someone who you say is your friend, but he's also an abuser. Yeah. And I don't understand a lot of black folk yeah. that have been, especially in these comment sections, defending Diddy. Y'all are saying, oh, y'all are ready for this black man to be um going down. Y'all ready for this black man to be taken down. Y'all wishing this man harm and all of the things or whatever like that. No, yeah. people are wishing accountability. Yeah. And not just him taking accountability, but consequences yeah. for his actions. You know what I mean? He tortured Cassie for a decade. And others allegedly too. Yeah. You know, we don't know to the extent. I mean, there's a lot of rumors and conspiracy out, but uh, what was it? Diddy's old security guard is now alleging that there was cameras in every single room. Yeah. Politicians. Small mini cameras. Athletes, at that. everybody in any, I mean, Madagascar, the cartoon movie with kids and like little cartoons, they reference a Diddy party in the movie itself. That's how much that Diddy has a reputation for parties and how many people have been connected to Diddy. If you look back at especially some of the early 2000s stuff where you see like Ashton Kutcher and all those white parties and everything that's going on, Mm -hmm. especially looking back at it in hindsight, I'm like, what was really going on in those situations? Because from the you know, alleged conspiracy theories. And we want to make sure that they're in the alleged that haven't quite been proven yet, but these folks would come into these parties, especially, you know, straight black male artists that are coming up that are wanting to make a connection, especially with the producers and everybody in Hollywood. And they would end up getting drugged at these parties essayed or doing something that wouldn't be out of character for them. And especially because the black community does not deal with homophobia very well. So P. Right. Diddy was able to navigate that and weave and create this like untouchable status because yeah. the community is afraid to also address some of that sometimes. And I think that because he had that opening, he was able to really harm so many people and get so, I mean, he's a billionaire. Yeah. You have to realize how many people he's exploited to become a billionaire. And I'm also remembering, I I don't know if this was the same person that you were talking about that filed a lawsuit or whatnot, but he was saying something about, he was shown a video of Stevie J having sex with a white man. Um, showing that. that this happens all the time yeah. in the industry or whatnot, because I think he was being sexually harassed or something groomed by Diddy, degree. or sexually yeah. groomed yeah. by Diddy. And I was Rodney Jones—is that his name? Yeah. yeah, Rodney Jones, um, a former producer and videographer, <laughs> um, yeah. obviously well, filed a lawsuit or whatnot, and also talked about these things. And it was re- really crazy. And then I also hear that Young Miami was also in it as well too. That yeah. she was accused As of being a sex worker, a sex worker, yeah. and also um which we support that but in this case this is really like if you look at the tentacles from diddy you can trace it back now people are starting to look at the tupac situation right yeah yeah and they're starting to go wait a second if diddy had all of this power all of this control some of those alleged you know legends about diddy and tupac and everything that happened with biggie smalls it's all starting to look a certain way that people were getting erased because they were becoming, uh, you know, bigger in, in community. I mean, there's a whole, now the Nipsey hustle Snoop Dogg things coming out mm-hmm. where allegedly there might be connections there. Again, this is all alleged TikTok stuff. So it could be, you know, someone's idea to create these messages. And it's important to really get the information because we want these folks to actually get justice if, yeah. and when we can support them, because what's going on with Diddy. I mean, It's one thing if one person says something about you and we always want to believe victims. But if you've got a reputation the way that Diddy has had a reputation of like Diddy parties and they're always saying like, oh, you don't know what goes on there. And there's always this like mystique where it kind of sounded like, ooh, it's cool. But to find out it's been abuse the whole time. Yeah. That's scary. It's scary. And then, you know, 50 Cent weighing in too. Because apparently 50 Cent's baby mama was named in the lawsuit. Yeah. As a sex worker as well, and he's suing for full custody of their children. And yeah. apparently she went on Instagram like last week or whatever and accused him of trigger warning rape uh, and SA and all the things or whatever. Now, to make this very clear, just because you are named in a lawsuit does not mean that you are guilty yeah. of anything. And I think a lot of people um, don't understand the legal system in that way, yeah. but it does not mean that you're guilty. But... 50 Cent, 
Curtis Williams <laughs> is hoping they're accusing his ex whatever, baby mama, whatever she is to him. Yeah. Of being like a sex worker to Diddy. Yeah. And, you know, when I think about this whole situation with Diddy, I think about the whole thing with R. Kelly as well, too, and how these things have been happening pretty much in front of our eyes. And we yeah. really think did about not how know young about we it. were when we were listening to some of the music we were listening to, too. Yeah. Like, I was talking with my wife Hello. about it. I was like, we were one of the most over-sexualized generation yep. with the things that were going on, especially at a young age, we were exposed to a lot of stuff. Yeah. And We're the Pluto and Scorpio generation, because mm-hmm. you know your girl's an astrologer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we always want to yes. practice astrology. <laughs> <laughs> we and have Pluto, learned. And uh, Pluto, Scorpio rules sex. And Pluto naturally rules Scorpio. And so millennials are the Pluto and Scorpio generation. So we have definitely been exposed to a lot of sexual in, in, well, how do you pronounce that word? Indios or whatever. Indio. In, in, yeah, yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, I can't even pronounce it right. Yeah, yeah. But we've really been exposed to that. That was just our upbringing or whatnot. And yeah. so, you know, I think in my view, we can be kind of a sexualized, we could be a very sexual traumatized a society yeah. and group of like yeah. generation or whatnot. So I don't know, but is is this whole thing with Diddy? I don't think it's over by a long shot. No. I think more people are gonna come out because he settled yeah. that lawsuit with Cassie so quick. Yeah, it's not even funny. Um, when when Cat Williams said it was up for all of them, Diddy included, he was not. Playing. It's like every month, Cat Williams just gets reaffirmed with something else happening. Yeah. Like something else, something else, something else, something else. Yeah. So, I, I mean, looking at, again, this whole Diddy situation, I go, how did so many people get involved in the situation to support Diddy, too? Because mm. it's not just Diddy. Like, we have to right. be real of the enablers and the folks that were looking into money because – Allegedly, again, this is allegedly uh-huh. the was it Universal Music Group or something along those lines now is being included in the lawsuit. I mean, oh, yeah, that. Justin Bieber is now being involved in the lawsuit. Oh, I can see that. Because if you look at those <laughs> old video, did you see that old video of like Diddy that was like Bieber's what 14 years old had his hand over? I think like, I saw that. You're yeah, coming to Puffy Flavor Camp for 48 hours, and they were like, Yeah, we can't really talk about what's going on. And I remember seeing that like live as a kid, and I was like, "Oh my God, Justin Bieber's so lucky!" Like, and we how yeah. how we were like always looking at these kids that were in these spaces, and we were like, "Oh my God, I would love to do that." But now I'm like, "Oh, thank God, I was never in that yeah. space." You know? What yeah. do you think about like all of that? Because again, it just seems to be like this iceberg of I don't know. Like, it mm. could be an Epstein situation. Again, it's all alleged, yeah. but it's it's a lot. I feel like they sign NDAs, a lot of them. When they yeah. put those NDAs in place, like, they're just stuck and they're trapped. Yeah. When it comes to Justin Bieber, though, if you really notice, he, like other people, like Amanda Bynes, like, their behaviors shift Yeah. so publicly. And you can really tell Justin Bieber was definitely stardom. Yeah. And I think as time has gone on, he's just kind of kind of doing his own thing and he looks more reserved yeah. than anything. And that's kind of shocking because the way he started out was just kind of like with Diddy and all of the things or whatever. But I, I'm i really curious to know if the things that he may have experienced and saw um, that has kind of made him shift a little bit in like his music and his tone, especially, um, you know, I, I just... I, I can't stop thinking about R. Kelly when I think about Diddy. And I think about Look the people the that have, situation. Yeah. You know, that was crazy. I mean, the guy, what, what, she was 14 or something, and he was yeah. old when they got married. And it was, and everybody knew, and everybody was cool yeah. with it. And they were making songs like Age Ain't Nothing But a Number. Like, what? Married her when she was, I think, 14 years old. Yeah. And this would not shock me with Diddy. And so we're going to be tuning in and, and, Keeping up to date with everything. I think yesterday um, he posted an Easter picture with his daughter, his toddler on Instagram. I didn't see it, but I was reading about it today. So it was a mess. Oh, my God. That's all I got to say. Speaking of messes, have you heard what happened to Candace Owens? Ooh. (laughs) (laughs) The craziest thing. So 
Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's a longer one. That's a long button. Nope. <laughs> okay. Nope, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I was like, Candace nope. Owens? Nope. <laughs> Candace Owens? Nope. <laughs> he loves just for it. anybody out there that says that we should be supporting Candace Owens just because, you know, a clock strikes twice a day right. But that doesn't mean that it's accurate. And unfortunately. You know that, y'all. Yeah, no, actually. I actually did not know that. If a clock is broken at 12, at least twice a day, it's going to be right. This episode is brought to you by KitCaster. KitCaster books you on top podcasts. How do funded startup founders attract prospects and talent? Podcast interviews. How do entrepreneurs with exits find new deals? Podcast interviews. How do C-suite execs differentiate in crowded markets? Podcast interviews. KitCaster books you on top podcasts. Click the link in the show notes for a special offer. Celebrate good conversation. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. 12 p.m. and 12 a.m. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because the hands will be stuck there. So at least. I didn't know, y'all. <laughs> that makes sense now. I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> so, like, for Candace, in her whole situation where she's getting canceled, this is something that she has, like, vehemently talked about for, for so long about the left, about cancel culture. Yeah. And woke culture. And all of those things that are going on. Now, meanwhile, at the same time, She's getting canceled by her side, the side that she fought for. Mm. And something that I heard today, I was watching a TikToker actually make a really good review of like how their perspective of Candace Owens' situation is. It's like she sat here for years and years and years and years and years and using her identity as a black woman to actually empower racists to say things. And it seems like now that they have become the leopard eating party and they're eating her face in that sense, like mm. – do, to an extent, do I feel for Candace? Yes, because I even see how she was exploited. Yes. But she also willingly, as an adult, as, as intelligent, as she says she, you know, is, is, how did you let that slide past you where now you've got all of these folks that you are representing that don't look like you, that the moment you say something they don't like, you're out the door, you don't have a job. Mm -hmm. you, w w what was all of that for? Because you've caused harm for multiple different communities, and especially the trans community. You have come from my community right. so much in so many different ways and completely have even forgot about trans men, especially. You've especially come for black trans women in some reason mm -hmm. as some sort of I, – I mean, I don't know necessarily how to navigate Candace Owens because – one drop of me feels bad for her, but for the rest of it, it's like you planted these seeds, you sowed them, and these are the flowers you got. Mm. Now, to a certain degree, you know I disagree with you. Honey. Oh, I know. You already I know. know. I know. You already and that's why know we I work. Yes, you. yes, yes. No, I want to I don't it. feel sorry for her, and I yeah. am a black woman. Mm. You know, black conservatives are an oxymoron to me. Yeah. All these black conservatives are an oxymoron, you know that party is going to remind you that you are nothing more than a black person who is deemed inferior yeah. to what they are about. I don't care what y'all say. This woman wore a White Lives Matter shirt with Kanye oh, West yeah, thinking okay. that yeah. somehow, some way, she was doing something. Yeah. And she's, yeah. she's, she's talked down on trans people. She's talked down on so many people. And it's funny because I got attacked on social media recently about Candace. Oh, no. Um, I think I commented on the Shade Room on the Neighborhood Talk, and black people were attacking me. They were just like, oh, you're just mad because she's a free thinker. Well, first of all, we're all free thinkers, yeah. number one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Number two, it's the fact that this woman is just really vile. I saw her interview on The Breakfast Club. Um, and, and I will say this, though. It was a very interesting conversation because they had asked questions. That's where she got with the breakfast club. Yeah, yeah. They had asked her questions about her, her husband or whatnot because, you know, she has a white husband and she has a mixed baby. But her response was actually interesting. I will say that. It was really interesting because, you know, I think she talked about more of IQ versus, like, race. Yeah. But the thing is, she's spoken so disingenuous about other black people. Yeah. It, it, it it's hard. It's hard to even Take navigate and, and go with that or whatever like that. And so, you know, I saw Ben Shapiro getting on her and all the things or whatever. And yeah. 
The thing is, it's like somebody's going to watch this and say, how could you not have compassion for another black woman? Well, I don't have compassion for black people that cause harm to other black people intentionally just to appease a base that they know is not going to care for them in the long run. This is why I feel trans conservatives are the same way. Yeah. It's like, you know these people don't like you. You will demean and devalue your own self to appease these people because somehow, some way, they give y'all the attention. They give y'all the views. It's the they amplify thing, you know, it's your money. propaganda. Yeah. And it's it's pathetic. Yeah. And I think with Candace Owens, they made her the prime example yeah. of where black people yeah. in the conservative party will always remain. Well, anyone that's a minority, if you really think about it, anyone yeah. that is not a cis, white, affluent male. Yeah, Latinos, that Asian, exactly. conservatives. Exactly, shows yeah. that those roles that you are playing, you're being used as a tool. Mm. And I think the example of Candace Owens should send a message to all those folks that are in minority communities that are uplifting these harmful rhetorics because the idea that co-opting that somehow is going to bring something over to your community when all reality yeah. at the end of the day, what did Candace Owens get from the community other than cut off as soon as she wasn't saying what they wanted? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that makes her a tool for their oppression. That, that, that's what I see in the sense. And another thing is I will agree with you. And that's why I don't, as a, another thing is like, I'm white. Yeah. As you always say, Clearly. I, I'm not a trans Clearly. man, you know? Clearly. So these conversations as well, like, I think that for you to actually be able to Dick talk bitch, about bitch. <laughs> yeah. on the white part, <laughs> on the white part, <laughs> on the white part, you navigating these conversations. And I think it's very important to especially uplift the black community talking yeah. about Candace Owens, because all day I can say, I can see how I can empathize with her and this, that, and the other, but that can also be dangerous too, because I don't want to lend any of my credibility or any anything to Candace yeah. because again, she's caused a lot of harm. And I think that these type of conversations, like I told you about that TikToker um, who's going online and saying that, oh, we should support Candace yeah. Owens. It's giving grifter. Yeah. I mean, Ooh. even on, on behalf That's of That's a good word. That's as a good well. word. Like it, when he did that as a TikToker, and I'm not going to name him, but I'm sure you can look it up. Uh, what? Yeah, you know we love the no, name drop on this we'll, show. We'll, I'll give him a break because he's already- What's got, the first letter? I believe it's a K. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm a dig, honey. I'm a dig, dig, dig until I can't dig no more. I'll, I'll let the audience have some some homework to, to research on. Uh, and by the way, make sure to like and subscribe. Because yeah, did we, we say that earlier? No, we I don't did think not. we did that. Okay, <laughs> we're going to say that in the middle of the episode. Because we're make sure to like and subscribe so you all can hear more of this. But again, going back to it, like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I think the way that he even approached that as this like, because he was, he's very liberal leaning, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of his language that he uses on TikTok and for him to go, well, Candace is on our side. So now we should take her in. But then, like you said, there's no accountability for the years yeah. I'm telling you maybe even decades of damage that she yeah. has caused and especially empowered cis white men to say very hateful things because they'll go, well, Candace yeah. is saying it, so why can't I say it? In the same way that Blair does that to yeah. that lesbian community. Oh, but Candace destroyed Blair in that debate. She annihilated Blair White. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not, let me, let me I thought we weren't giving any credit to <laughs> Candace today. Let's be clear. <laughs> We're giving one drop of credit. Because I saw that episode. <laughs> That's the line. <laughs> I saw that episode, that debate with Candace Owens and Blair White, and Candace Owens annihilated Blair White for filth. Yeah. And I could tell that because I've had personal experience with Blair yeah. and how she's lied, I could understand where Candace was coming from more. Yeah. That's the only reason why I say what I say. But, um, you know, Candace, I always try to give people the benefit of the doubt. But I think sometimes we give certain people too much benefit of the doubt yeah. and they run with it. Yeah. And Candace is one of those people. Yeah. And so I hope that this is a lesson for her. You know, I hope that she seeks healing. I don't want anything bad to happen to her, yeah. but it's kind of like you reap what you sow and you catch her karma eventually yeah. because deep down inside, those people do not care about black women. 
No. Black women in general. And the oppression of trans black women affects black yeah. women. How many cis women in the last year have been murdered or attacked because they thought they were trans? Yeah, transphobia affects all women. Yes. And I've been saying this for quite some time. 100%. And the thing is, it's like, but Candace weaponizes transphobia yeah. to a certain degree. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, it makes it hard for people like me to support you yeah. when you've caused so much harm that is irreconcilable. You know what I mean? Like, you, yeah. you can't reconcile with that. Yeah, because some of the things she said straight to the camera, straight to the face, it's like you can't take those words back. And if you're not going to take accountability for the impact of those words, too, and just kind of, like, move on, that's abuse. Yeah. Like, your audience, in a sense. Yeah, she went to a school, and I remember um, this student stood up and asked Candace, you know, what are your thoughts on you being here when the trans community is not comfortable? And her response was, I'm too pregnant to care. Get a helmet. Life's tough. And I was just like, you know, that's such a cop out. Yeah. But black conservatives, I don't expect anything more from them. Yeah. I, I, I genuinely yeah. don't expect anything um, intellectually honest. Yeah. Um, I think that black conservatives don't even have the intellectual capacity to begin with. And that's a lot of y'all that I've debated, okay, <laughs> you black conservatives. Well, I feel like they've kind of given up in a sense to a degree where they're just kind of going, well, white supremacy wins. I'm just going to play the game and do what they want. Yeah. That's kind of what it It's giving yes like. massa tease. They, it you gives can say yes that. Massa. I'm not saying that. It's you giving said it. yes massa. These black conservatives, every time they bow down, it's giving yes massa tease. And all of y'all have fallen in for it. Yeah. Okay. And I just sit over here with my lone liberal <laughs> tail self, just looking at y'all, eating my popcorn and just going, mm. <laughs> that's being messy. I just, it's crazy Ooh. how many folks, though, this year alone have mm -hmm. been up for something, including. Our next topic, which is a really heavy topic, and Ooh. I want to make sure to put a trigger warning because uh, yes. this does talk about SA and especially uh, for children. Uh, the Quiet on the Set documentary came out, and that triggered me, mm. and it triggered me in a way that me I wasn't too. expecting because of how I grew up as a kid and mm -hmm. all that like performance stuff that I was always in and all that. What's your feeling on it? Where do you want to go? Where do you okay. want to start? Because it's well, a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. Well, you know, I, I went over to Shane's house and I watched <laughs> it. We watched it together. Me, him, and his beautiful wife. Uh, we watched Shout out to Discovery Plus for all of being $2.99. <laughs> By the way, anybody wants to watch it, go to Discovery Plus for $2.99 instead of the other ones for $9.99. We got it for a little cheaper. He knows everything, honey, because your girl over here ain't got cable. I ain't got none of that. So I'm just like, let me go over to Shane's house. Free I, subscription. Yeah. <laughs> so we went over there. We watched it together. I think yeah. it was four hours. And mm. I think they released a fifth episode, which yeah. we haven't watched yet. Yeah. Um, basically, for those of y'all that have not watched, Dan Schneider was a powerhouse, especially in the 90s when he came to uh, kids' programming. Yeah. He created shows like All, um, All That, um, The Amanda Show. He's yeah. done shows like iCarly, Victorious, a lot of uh, Nickelodeon stars. And that documentary talked about accusations of SA, racism, um, a lot of different things that were happening on set. People were being abused, harassed on the set of his shows. And interesting enough, I think the biggest thing that came out of that was Drake Bell, okay? Drake Bell was on The Amanda Show as well as on Drake, uh, Drake and Josh. Yeah. Um, Dan Schneider always does this thing where when he creates shows, there's always going to be that one or two breakout store star, and he spins them off into their own shows. Because, you know, Miranda Cosgrove was on Drake and Josh, and then she got on iCarly. Victoria Justice was on Zoe 101, and then she ended up with Victoria. It's like a Marvel universe. Yeah. 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 It's good strategy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's really, really good. But um, Drake Bell appeared, I think, in like episode three or, or four, one of them. And he talked about being the John Doe that was at the center of a lawsuit, I think, back in 2004 or something like that, where he Early was as a on set. And I literally think this was right before he got the show, Drake and Josh. Um, I think they had started filming the pilot or something like that. Um, and the person uh, was Brian Peck. 
Um, he is not related to Josh Peck, who was Drake Bell's co-star. I definitely thought that, really that too. I was like, wait a second, what? <laughs> well, because especially that. Josh Peck, we don't know who his father is, but go on. <laughs> no, seriously, you look it up. It says, really? it, yeah, it says he doesn't know who his father is. on the Amanda show, he was the pickle guy. Yeah. Um, and the Amanda show ran from 1999 to 2002, oh, but he was sketch. apparently like the pickle guy or whatever what like the that. the glory hole is happening. <laughs> not the glory that? hole, honey. No, they literally <laughs> had like, he came out with pickles. And what is it? Keanu Reeves, I think, was in the bathroom, right? Was it Keanu Reeves? I, oh, I think it was been Ray some... Romano, I thought. Oh, right, right, right. I Let's... think it's Ray Romano. It was Ray Romano. Okay. And he puts a pickle through a hole. And yeah. He, like, I'm like, what were we watching as children? No wonder what yeah, it like... was. It was horribly insane. Um, I can't believe that would get approved. Like today, producers, yeah, never. But Drake, never. Yeah, it was crazy. But apparently, um, Drake Bell's girlfriend's mom actually convinced him to go to the police and and file everything. And so, um, you know, it was really sad because it really torn um, a wedge between him and his father because Brian Peck was responsible for that. Yeah. Um, and you know, and and. Apparently, from what we understand is every child star had to have their parents on set. Yeah, it's it's a, um, it's a legal thing. And so, you or know, the guardian or someone watching. Yeah. Yeah. And so all of this was going on. Brian Peck invited him to his house. He would have parties over his house. And apparently Drake Bell fell asleep um, and woke up to Brian Peck. Um, having oral sex with him. And I think Drake Bell was around 15, 16. And actually, we were, we're the same age. So it's this whole thing, going back to what we said earlier, millennials being exposed to so much. And, you know, that tale was just really horrible. And, you know, thinking about Amanda Bynes right here is... is um, we owe Amanda Bynes an apology, in my opinion, because I she want her suffered on the so I would much from mental health. I would love to have a conversation health. with her, honestly, and and just whatever she wants to talk about. And, you know, shout out if anybody knows Amanda, let her know she always has an invitation oh. here to shoot and talk with us because what she's been through as a child star, and remember how you were saying, like, you can see that moment where, like, Justin Bieber, yeah. Drake, you can actually kind of look at their media as a child growing up through various projects or whatever interviews they're doing, you can see that there is a stark difference when something happened. Oh, a yeah. certain year, their look changed, their demeanor changed. Yeah. And that, those are all signs of trauma, abuse. All, I mean, all of the stuff that we've learned when we used to work with clients and stuff, all it hits all the bars. If you yeah. Think about it. It's, uh, I mean, the change of uh, the way they look, the the way they present themselves, the way that they're, I mean, Amanda has been so reserved, that poor thing, like, it seems like she has kind of a Britney Spears situation, mm, but because she didn't yeah, have even the same popularity as Britney, she's not even getting the same support with the conservatorship because we're learning about these Coogan accounts where people are not getting money put into it. The parents are taking the money. There's so many different stories because at one point, from my understanding, Amanda Bynes was actually going to get a emancipation from her parents. Yeah. Right? But I think it was being convinced either by Dan Schneider or somebody. So it was Dan influenced. allegedly, I think, was influencing that situation. What I think they said on the episode is that she was running away to his house because she was having an issue with her, her parents. parents. And then he took advantage of the space and the time because, mm. you know, like imagine you're 16 years old, your parents are taking <sighs> your money, allegedly, yeah. and you're trying to get away from that. You've got your producer. Your producer then creates the safe space space for you you think it's safe and that's when you get abused allegedly again she also released a statement that she said she doesn't remember anything that happened she had a great time she this that and the other yeah and i do want to acknowledge that that that's what her statement is because she also is not probably comfortable to talk about it or maybe something didn't happen but from my viewpoint looking at just the shift in her media you know mm -hmm. especially like the, the 2015 era when she started to have all of those issues and pop up, something clearly happened to her. Something yeah. harmful happened to her. And it, it's sad. Allegedly, she had a baby at 13. That's alleged. Yeah, there's, alleged. That, there's, there's that Twitter that account that hasn't been verified, but allegedly she would show photos of her driver's license or photos that were nowhere on the internet that mm. it was like, hey, this is me. This is Amanda Bynes. And then she was saying, like, my producer got me pregnant at 13, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And she's been saying it for years. And so has so many. I mean, look at Corey Feldman. 
you know, he's been saying, saying it, it for a long for time. a long time. Yeah, a long, and nobody believed him. But what was interesting was the cast of all that. Yeah. Um, I we grew up watching all that. Like I was such an all that person. I love that they had Katrina Johnson in that um documentary because um I used to love Katrina so much and they pretty much phased her out when Amanda Bynes came on yeah. season 3. But in the video um in the documentary, you know, they talked about their experiences and I just thought it was like really interesting how some of the cast members are all that, especially the black ones. Um I don't know it wasn't Christy Knowings. It was the other black girl that was on there. I think she came in like season six or seven, right, right when all that was shifting. Yeah. Because uh, Josh Server was the oldest, the longest running ca- original cast member. And I think after season six, they moved to a younger crowd yeah. or whatnot because all of us were kind of aging out. Mm-hmm. But uh, look at all of them. I think that was about season six. Six. That was towards like five or six or yeah. whatnot. But the original cast included Angelique Bates, Lori Beth Denberg, um, Keenan and Kel, Elisa Reyes, Katrina Johnson. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. I'm, I can name them cast members, okay. honey. Okay. <laughs> Shit. But it was really interesting, though, um, just listening to their experiences, like with Dan Schneider. Um, there was a lot of crazy things happening on set. Um, Dan was accused of hollering, yelling on set. And some of the cast members, Angelique Bates was not in the documentary, but she did talk about um, recently her experience on the All That set. Angelique left after uh, two seasons. I think they fired her. Um, And that's when Amanda Bynes actually came in for season three. Mm -hmm. But Angelique, and I was reading an article, Angelique was talking about a time where she had to do this thing with a coworker that she was already having problems with. And apparently the coworker ended up spitting milk in her face. And Angelique retaliated by throwing milk back at them. And apparently Dan Schneider yelled at her on set and only or whatnot, right? only her. Yeah. And it was just a whole thing or whatnot. Because Angelique was actually the first one to leave all that. She was one of the, she was actually the first original cast member to leave it. So, you know, I'm a TV fanatic. I know all of these things. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Well, all that to, like, let's be real. It was the 90s and it's Mm -hmm. also a white producer. They very much characterized a lot of the black creators that were on there. Look at what they did to Nick Cannon. Uh, There's Mm. a scene where it's like, people you may know and it's like Nick Cannon sitting there and it's some of the most like racist shit like nick cannon steals and nick cannon this and like all this weird mm. shit and nick cannon is like maybe 15 16 at the yeah time. so you have to uh, you have to realize this white producer is white writing this like anti-black undertones that are mm-hmm. so gentle that like you have to actually be a part of the group to actually hear the full impact of what he's saying and feel it because like you said as i heard on the documentary like I heard a lot of pain in a lot of yeah. black folks. It seemed like they saw and they knew that white privilege was on set and they knew that, you know, Amanda and Drake were going to get the privilege and the priority with with uh, Dan and they would try to make connections. They didn't feel like they could. Remember the young man that had the dicks put on him? Yeah, Leon. I was just about to bring up Leon. Like, and it's so funny because we didn't understand a lot of the hidden things no. until like Leon yeah. and everybody started talking about it. Apparently it's like he was supposed to be the superhero and on his shoulders, they look like they were testicles and a penis it's on a nose. both sides. And when he sneezed, it was like this snotty goo Come that shot. landed on Christy Knowings on, um, her, face. on her face. Shot. And apparently it was like a cum shot joke or whatnot but us as kids yeah we didn't understand that i sure did not and i was still watching all that during that season that was like the later seasons five and six but what was also so interesting to me was they had two women writers sharing one salary yeah and those women were harassed they were abused one of the women dan schneider came in and told one of the women pretending like pretend like trigger warning you're getting sodomized yeah, that was so and triggering. Did it in a boardroom for her to read whatever. I mean, that's yeah. The men didn't care. Like if they were the two women writers, they had to split a salary. Yeah. Apparently, one of them went to the Writers Guild of America, as they should, because you shouldn't be splitting a salary like that. Well, to be fair, that actually is a con- 
this is the horrible thing is some spaces in Hollywood that actually is common for a new mm. writer, for two writers to actually split a salary. But with the way that like supremacy and even masculinity comes into the space of just going, okay, well, we'll just hire the two girls and they'll split it. But the rest of the guys, we're going to take right. care of. It's like mm-hmm. this good old boys kind of club. So technically it's legal. Technically it's regular practice for it to happen because there's been plenty of uh, writers and I'm sure throughout history, there's going to be people that said, hey, I shared a salary with Bob and I was a writer and I did it on this show. But what? it's that layering of especially – You've got two women, and Mm -hmm. they're the only two ones on the set that are splitting a salary. Meanwhile, you've got – I think they said a young man came on set, and he got a full salary right away, and he was a white guy. Yeah, because, again, it's that good old boys club that kind of happens. And it's really hard sometimes to call that stuff out because on paper it looks clean. It looks kosher. It looks good. Yeah. But the feeling of knowing that the only two women on set are sharing a salary, meanwhile, the rest of the men are getting a full salary, that energy alone in the right room is toxic. And you remember Penelope Taunt? Tate. Tate. Apparently, that means something. Apparently, y'all, it means the area between... Your anus and your... Penelope, I think, in Latin or is penis. And then it was penis taint. Is Penelope taint. That's it, taint. And then on top of it, they had amandaplease.com. I remember. to (gasps) please.com. I didn't realize that. Man to please. Dot com. That was Even a very iCarly. popular little site, though. They, did you hear about iCarly had two contests? And this is, again, another Dan Scheider show where they sent photos of children's feet. Were co- like you would email a photo of your feet, draw a smiley face on your toe. Where did all those photos go? Yeah. Again, like what – what is going on? So when Dan did that interview uh, with the former cast member, the one that he just did, that was like the whole, oh, you know, everybody was involved. Okay, then let's get everybody at the table that was involved and hold yeah. accountable. That's what I see. Like, I, I don't agree know with why that. he's trying to sit here and say like, oh, well, you know, this guy wrote off on it and this guy wrote off on yeah. it and everything's good. And okay, I believe him on that. It. Name the people so we can hold them accountable too. I believe the Nickelodeon execs had a lot to do with it. I, I, I That's the one thing I may believe Dan Schneider on. Yeah. I truly, truly believe that. Yeah. But Melissa Joan Hart is so interesting. Um, You know, she's conservative and it's so disappointing. You know, Melissa Joan Hart used to be Clarissa from Clarissa Explains It All and Sabrina from um, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yeah. But she was doing Megan McCain's uh, podcast, and she talked about her experience at Nickelodeon. You know, her show ended a year before all that premiered. I think it was from, like, 91 to 94 or 93, something like that. And, you know, originally, a lot of the Nickelodeon shows shot in Florida, Orlando, before they moved out here to California. And, you know, she just kind of talked about how she believes the victims and everything. She didn't experience that because it was slightly different. She believes it was different from the Orlando um, actors versus, like, the L.A. Hollywood ones. Um, And it was just really interesting listening to her experience um, because they also, the black guy from Just Jordan, um, his show was really go up dope. I used to watch it all the time. <laughs> you or whatever. Say what he said on it Twitter? was really dope. But <laughs> you know, he, he was just like you know, nothing happened on his show. And back to no, Melissa he said Jones, he's not getting his ass cheeks clapped. Oh yeah, show that's what something. he said. Like he like, said some wild shit. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> we got a button that. And I was just like, but you know, the same thing that him and Melissa was saying was not all. Shows had bad apples on there I or whatnot. Yeah. But I don't think Dan Schneider produced all those shows either. No. So I don't no. like he didn't touch Melissa. He didn't no. touch Clarissa Explains at all. And I don't think he was doing just Jordan. You can tell the Dan Schneider universe. They're all they all look alike. Like yeah. the iCarly and the Victoria. Remember Hey Dude? Each remember other. that? Like I yeah. think there was an era for Nickelodeon when they were first coming up that they they felt they followed the rules a little bit. Yeah. And I think what ended up happening, Nickelodeon became a conglomerate because of Dan. Yeah. He was the golden boy. So that's when that mm-hmm. no accountability came in. Lots of money started. Because when Nickelodeon first started, like, they didn't have the money that they had. Nope. I mean, when Hey Dude was being produced, that was, 
look at and the that's production. an original, yeah. It's it's an original, but you can look at that they definitely saved some money on yeah. the production because they filmed in, they filmed in uh, a ranch outside of Tucson, Arizona. I was reading about this last night. It's funny that you bring up Hey Dude, yeah, because Clarissa's show, uh, uh, Melissa Joan Hart's show, was actually one of the first original shows after Hey Dude was canceled. Yeah, um, so you know. Like, you know, your girl loves Salute Your Shorts and all of the shows back then or whatnot. Remember, I think it's called Alex Mack. I think the, the show. The Secret World of Alex yes, Mack. Yes, how she melted. I that love. That was my show. I, that Larissa was my Olenek show. is so yeah. wonderful. She's such a great actress. I love that show. That was like. A Kim Field's younger sister person. was on that show. Yeah. Uh, I loved Alex Mack. I used to, I got a book, um, Alex Mack, uh, like from like the book fair when I was a kid. And so. You know, it, it's just really shocking. And, you know, Disney, you know you're next. Disney Channel. Oh, my God. I'm waiting on Annalisa Vanderpool no. and Christy Romano. Um, to confirm Chris, some Christy of the Carson things Romano to uh, Mr. Talk. Orlando Blue <laughs> Brown is saying. Ooh. Orlando Brown is like. That man ain't lying. He just, he, he has a substance abuse problem, but I don't think he's lying. I don't think he's lying. I think he also speaks in metaphors because he's afraid to say it fully. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because there's a lot of power in Hollywood. I mean, people can lose their livelihoods. Yeah. They I talked mean, about that too. You can be blacklisted. I mean, that was mm-hmm. the whole Brian Peck situation. It was one of the leverages that they used on Drake was like, oh, well, you'll never work again. And then you got a kid who is now providing for his entire family. Mm-hmm. He is the linchpin for making sure everybody eats. And you've got someone essaying him. Yeah. You know, like the advantages, especially, I mean, all the way to Shirley Temple. And this goes back to like, what, 19, 20, 30, whenever she was popped into Hollywood. Yeah. There's always been this like uncomfortable exploitation, I think, of children because we want to tell the stories. And children add to movies and stories because if you think of the movie – I see dead people, whatever, that little boy, that, that hit, that scene made that movie, you know, like when you think of that, but at the same time, like, what is the price of these kids lives? Like they, it's almost like they gave up their childhood. So we had one, but then now looking back now that I know they went through, it almost destroys my childhood too. Yeah. Like I can't look at any of my favorite shows now that I used to watch. I'm like, okay, let's just move on to something else because I, even if there isn't trauma on the episode, I almost feel the like I can sense. see it. Like I can see this something in the episode itself where it just it feels off. And and I mean, even things like Ren and Stimpy, some of the cartoons. Oh, that was were, that was too much. That oh show was God. one of the only shows rated TV Y7. That show was too much. <laughs> I mean, but I grew up on Ren and Stimpy too. Yeah, and same. I grew up in a generation where like I'm like, again, that elder millennial where the not maybe not so much for you, but I was very much still kind of like a latchkey kid, is what they call. Where mm-hmm. like you, you got a key to the house, you go up, and your parents are just letting you run feral through the yeah, streets, no. kind of. So much later, yeah. No, I mean me. like street lights were on. I had to be home, kind of like I grew up a little bit more old school, I think, than some millennials did yeah. too, because I had older folks, like older parents and older brothers and stuff. So mm-hmm. they had that pattern, you know, like with Nickelodeon and the whole thing with slime. Yeah. So it's TikTokers like, oh. have dug into it and are asking questions. Why is it green? Boogers. If you know video production, (laughs) no video. (laughs) I don't know why I said boogers. (laughs) (laughs) For for video production, Mm -hmm. a green screen. Oh. So you've got slime getting on all these children. You can uh-huh. easily change the color to white. <gasps> oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Oh. I've done my research because I went through what, I did what it is. I did not know that. All the problematic things that are going <sighs> And then the logo's a foot. The logo's a foot for, what was it, like 10 years? A yeah. A foot as a logo? Like, yeah. The idea that somehow... The folks up at top were not involved. It's it's like, how do we hold those folks accountable? Because again, they are very powerful in Hollywood. Yeah. I'm not even about accountability. I'm about consequence these days. Like, yeah. what's the consequence for all of this? And how do we protect child stars? Like a lot of the black people that were on the all that set or whatever, like black moms, black dads were complaining 
all of a sudden kids were fired, especially black moms. Yeah, that was... um, I even read with Angelique Bates or whatever, her mom was sexually harassed by one of the producers. And I was like, that's insane. That is freaking insane. And like you said earlier, because people are afraid of being blackballed, one. Number two, these were their first jobs, yeah. their first breakout role on television. Yeah. So you're going to do everything that you can to keep that, including being complicit to the abuse you've been experiencing. And that's, and that's why happened. I felt so sorry for all of these child stars from Nickelodeon. And it makes me wonder about people like Victoria Justice Shia LaBeouf. and Mariah uh, I'm sorry, Miranda Cosgrove and, you know, uh, Josh Peck, all of these people who I haven't heard too, too, too much about, especially Victoria but Justice. again, that Jeanette McCurdy book basically Oh, Jeanette McCurdy. How can we forget her? The, allegedly, those two producers pulled her in and said, hey, don't talk about Nickelodeon. We'll give you 300K. Yeah. Now, I said, don't nope. know if those other folks did that. And I don't know if I can even really sit here and say I would judge because I don't know the life they were living in that right. moment, to be honest. And if they are the the breadwinners for their family, maybe there was a reason they made that decision. Because, again, we don't know what struggles that they were going through, that they had to take that money. Because yeah. we have to, again, be aware of this, like, dynamic. Because even what you and I are doing having this conversation could possibly blackball us from people in Hollywood because it's dangerous to even have these kind of conversations. Yeah. But it's the truth, and yeah. these conversations are out. But I think Jeanette McCurdy was so brave because, you know, one, her mother was abusing her, yeah. which was really horrible. And I used to see, like, videos of them together or whatnot. And so, you know, to her, the best thing in her life happened when her mom passed away. And that's so unfortunate to hear. But then on top of that, I commend Jeanette because, you know, she stood up to the big people and was like, no, I'm not going to take this $300,000. I'm going to share my story. And she came out with a best-selling book about that. Yeah. So, you know, it, it just really makes me wonder about some of these other child Nickelodeon stars. You know, Victoria Justice, I bring her up a lot because about three years ago, I was in a very depressive state. And one of her songs, um, Treat Myself, really helped save me. It was much more about treating herself much more with kindness because, you know, with Victoria Justice, there was this whole thing with her and Ariana Grande. Yeah. The same with Jeanette McCurdy and Ariana. Which was you know done I mean? by the producers. That's, done the, by the, that's producers, the most yeah. Machiavellian of it all. It's like yeah. the strings are being pulled by these girls fighting each other. They don't even know why they're fighting each other. Meanwhile, yeah. it's like... We don't even know what happened to Ariana Grande. You saw that potato video? Yeah. And like her, like with the foot thing. To the point it's where, crazy. listen, I know she's a little problematic with her whole relationship situation that she's yeah. got going on. But I gave her a drop more of empathy after seeing that potato video because I don't know what that girl has been through in terms of exploitation. She's lost Mac Miller. She's lost. Yeah. She's been through a lot. She was able to make Ooh. herself a really big career because of it. I think even, what was it? She was at a funeral two, three years ago and she was getting felt up by one of the pastors on stage. Like she's been through a lot. Yeah. So – Again, I know problematic with the home record thing. Nobody wants to. Uh, I know it's a little, uh, but I can almost see how she arrives at those allegedly type of paths. alleged home record. Allegedly, allegedly, but I can see how she arrives at those paths because of yeah. what she's been through. Because again, a lot of trauma can make you navigate the world differently. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. This. Was amazing, Shane. Good, yeah. Oh my God, this was a lot to unpack. We still gotta watch the fifth episode, so y'all already know what it's giving. And so, honey, it's time to wind down. Really Any last thoughts before we take it on out of here? All I can say is, you know, as someone who grew up the way that I did, because I was a performer, you know, kid. Like I grew up. Uh, you know, fifth grade, I was in the Guys and Dolls. I, I was doing everything and anything. I play multiple instruments, but I was also being kind of groomed by my family to be mm. a performer in this thing. Because I grew up in this like Hollywood Scientology Celebrity Center kind of <gasps> thing, you know. And for me, it was – it's really hard to just see how much kids – 
Because I know what it's like to be that little kid and have that dream. And I worked my ass off to learn all of these things. And, mm -hmm. and I will go 10 times harder. I will stay on the set longer. I will right. do what it is. And that's hard to do that as a child. So like their work ethic is amazing. But then to know that they were exploited in that situation, it's like, yeah. and I can, and I can empathize because I've seen my own self being exploited. I saw, I mean, even a lot of the other folks around me being exploited that were children that were like six to 15 years old. And How are you experienced that love? It's, it's just, it's rough to know that this world is the way that it is, but as much as the old guard is crumbling and it's every, every day we hear the world is falling apart. I have some weird hope, some weird hope that things are crumbling and it feels like it's falling apart because mm -hmm. other old guards are losing their power. But I still feel like us as a millennial generation are really coming in to grasp and to change things because we're getting into seats of power now. Yeah. I mean, you and I, we sit on a board for the city of West Hollywood. Like we literally don't just do this podcasting stuff. We actually put in the work for community. And there's so many other multifaceted people that are in our generation as millennials that aren't just doing one thing. They're doing multiple things yes. to change the world. And I think... I really commend uh, Drake Bell for speaking up. I mean, I'm still, it's a little hard for me to fully say that because of some of the stuff that he also did allegedly to That's true. the girl. That's true. But as I looked into yep. that lawsuit itself, um, apparently there was no thing sent. Uh, it was, she lied about her age. There's a lot of things there, but still to an extent, he's got some responsibility to take in that because you Absolutely. can't. Absolutely. You know, folks that experience sexual assault can't go around and assault other people and say, well, I experienced it, so it's okay for me to do it. Like, mm. we have to stop. You have to take that yeah. point and end that generational trauma and hold on to that and, and build a better space for kids because I am always 100% about protecting kids. Everyone tries yeah. to present this idea that trans people are not about protecting kids. If I didn't give a shit about kids, I would have been stealth. I would have lived a regular ass life. I would have never tried to become an advocate. And I could have easily done that, especially as a white trans man. I give a shit about kids because of what I experienced as a, as a child. I didn't have the language to talk about it now. So now as an adult, I do have the language so that I can actually put that energy behind it so folks can understand all of these things that we've been through as community in so many different ways it's important for us to have these conversations. And I thank you so much for always showing up to these episodes, thank Blossom. You. Because, you know, despite all the hate comments, despite everything, you and I are both on this path. And in a year, two, three from now, people will understand why we're having these conversations. And yes. I think they'll be a lot happier because we did it when no one else was really willing to do it because it's not easy. We Love you, down. We, we receive a lot of blowback. Woo! I mean, Democrats don't like yeah. us. Republicans don't like us. But That's we the can, thing. But you know what, though? You know, we can like, handle it. And, you know, my final thoughts on everything is I commend everybody that participated in this documentary. Yeah. And I commend everyone who's speaking out afterwards because they are so brave. Yeah. They're so powerful. And, you know, it's helping someone. Someone who may be experiencing the same thing, yeah. it's helping them somehow, some way. And I think it's important that we hear about these stories because we didn't know this. Like, we're, this is our childhood. No, I, I Millennials like are kids. traumatized yeah. by this documentary. But I can't wait for the Disney Channel one to come out. And I can't wait for some of these other things to come out or whatnot. Um, you know, it was a very hard documentary to watch because... The things that were happening on set there happen in other um, entities, like whether you're in healthcare, Industry. whether you're like yeah. in nonprofit, like it happens in so many other different industries. Yeah. And comparing all of those things really was shocking and daunting to me, but it it taught me a lot. I learned a lot. And so... You know, I think I, you know, I think that's where I just want to leave it. Like it's it I, I think these people were brave. Yeah. And you know, that's that. That is that. That is that, everybody. That and is the transparency podcast. Woo! We what? did it without no guest. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you like and subscribe. Wait, wait, let me, let me, let me see. That may have to cut this is, one out. It is, let me it do is, it over again. See, it's not as easy as a lot. Watch this. Check this out. Let's go. Make sure you hit the like button down below and make sure you subscribe down below. So that way you'll know when we post new videos like so. Take a little time to enjoy the Transparency Podcast Show. We'll see you next time. Have a good ah. <laughs>